Hola, Year 7. Today and this week we're going to look at a bit of a recap for vocab that we have covered in Year 7. Now obviously, because of um, you not being in school for the last couple of months, most of you, we've not covered all of the things that are in this lesson for this week, but don't worry at all because it's a good chance for you to see these words for the first time, revise the ones you have seen, learn new ones and don't worry we will get you all caught up when you're back at school in um, the future, hopefully as soon as we can. So you're going to need a word document, you can make one of these and attach it at the end with all your answers so that your teachers can see how you've got on but you don't need to wait for us to mark it because we're going to go through the answers you will be able to mark them yourself. So here's the first activity you need to match the numbers 1 to 6 with the letter and it's all to do with brothers and sisters. Here we've got number 1 the answers done for you you can see there as an example so it's tengo una hermanastra, it's C, it's a half-sister. If you're not sure what the pictures mean, A, half-brother, B is two brothers, C, half-sister, D, two sisters, E, two sisters and a brother, and F, no brothers or sisters, no siblings. See if you can match the words and um, one to six, those phrases with the correct picture. And if you need to look up any of the words at any point in this lesson, you can. Pause the video, give it a go. Great, here's the answer slide. Give yourself a mark out of six. Let's move on to this conversation. Now, this you should have done at the beginning of Year 7, so I know that was a long time ago, but if you were there at the start of Year 7, you should have learned this. You may have learned it in primary school. Lots of the things in this lesson today you might have learned in your primary school, so you may remember bits from then. All you've got to do is choose from the words in the blue box at the bottom which word you think should go in each gap. The first one is done for you, como. It's a question, como te llamas? Does anyone remember what that means? It means, what's your name? So you don't need to use como again for any of the others. See if you can work out which word would go in each gap. Again, you can look up the words, um, if you find it tricky you can, or you think it's not quite right for you, it's okay, you can skip an activity, come back to it later. If I'm going on too long and talking too much, you can skip me as well. And we're going to go through these answers in a sec, but hopefully at least we'll pick up some new words today. Here are the answers. And while you're marking those, I'll just tell you the extension as well. If you don't want to know those, you can pause or skip this bit. But the extension answers are buenos um, or buenos dias um, would mean hello, literally means good day. Muy bien means very good. Como estás? How are you? You can also say que tal? which is what we saw in that conversation. And vivimos, we live, vivimos. Next activity, pets. So you've just got to find out if the sentences are true or false. Number one, you put V if it's true. V for verdadero, which means true in Spanish or F for false, falso. So for number one it says, Lydia tiene un pez y dos gatos. 
Now remember your numbers, because that's important here. It says un vez, a, so one, something, and two, something. Now we need to check these. If you need to look them up, that's fine. Beth, fish, gatos, cats. So Lydia, it says, has one fish and two cats. Let's look and see if it's true. If we look at the picture for Lydia, it is true. There's one fish and two cats. So we can put one V for true. Give yourself a chance to do this now. There is an extension as well. We'll mark it in a sec. And there are the answers. Remember, during this lesson, like all the others, don't forget to pause the video when you need to, to give yourself a chance to mark the answers or to give the activity a go. But I'm not going to wait for you because I don't want this video to be really, really long. So you just pause it when you need it. Next activity, we've got Ariana and Omar. And we're going to complete a fact file for each of them. So you can see the fact file in yellow on the right. From name to hero. I want you to read each paragraph and see how much information you can fill in for each person. So for example, name, well we would start with Ariana, lives in Malaga. What's her personality like? She says seria and generosa. This is all in the top grey box. So seria, serious and generosa, generous. Now you can guess those, but even if you weren't sure, you can always look them up. Your extension, if you want to, once you've completed your fact files, is to translate at least one of those texts into English, either Ariana or Omar, and you can submit those on Google Classroom so your teachers can see it. So let's quickly go through the answers now. Pause this video if you haven't had a chance to do this yet. Ariana. She lives in Malaga. She's serious and generous. She's 13 years old. Birthday 9th of December. She's got three brothers. Actually, hermanos can also mean siblings, so it could be sisters as well. And she doesn't have any pets. For tengo tres hermanos, um, she probably, it's very likely, she just means three brothers. But be careful because sometimes when you do see the word hermanos, it can mean siblings. But I think here it's safe to say she means brothers. Pets, um, she says no tengo mascotas. Mascotas, pets, no pets. Passion is music and her hero is Rihanna. For Omar, he lives in Las Palmas. He's shy, but sincere and nice. He's 14. Birthday is the 17th of April. He's got a sister. He's got a dog and a cat. His passion is football and his hero is Lionel Messi, the football player. If you translated any of the text in full, you can submit that on Google Classroom. Well done. Let's move on. The next activity is a listening. So I'm going to read out to you and I want you to try and listen for one, two, three and four. Which letter is it talking about? So listen and think which place, which activity is Catalina planning which place does she want to go to? A is church, B is a park, C a beach, D shopping, E cinema, F is a museum, and G is a restaurant. Some of these 
you'll remember hopefully. Some of them sound like English, so even if you think I've forgotten all my Spanish or I don't know any of it, don't worry because some of them will sound like English. So, number one. El martes voy a ir a la playa. Listen again for number one. Pick which letter you think it's talking about. El martes voy a ir a la playa. Now we'll just check that one together so I know you know what to do. Playa, we heard. I said, el martes voy a ir a la playa. Playa is a beach. So you would put C, one C. Now you won't need C again. Number two, now I'm not gonna help you with this. Give it a go, but there is a word in it that sounds like English. El miércoles espero ir al parque central. El miércoles Espero ir al parque central. Pick a letter. Number three now. El jueves quiero visitar el museo. That one sounds a bit like English. Listen again. El jueves quiero visitar el museo. And finally, number four. El viernes voy a ir de compras. El viernes voy a ir de compras. That's a tricky one. If you want to look up Compras, you can find out what it means, but don't worry, we're going to go through the answers in a sec. And here they are. So mark your answers one, two, three, four. The letters were C, B, F, D. If you got four out of four, amazing. Even if you just got one or two, that's great. Moving on, we've got a translation to do. Translate this text into English. I've given you some words in green to help you. And there's a translation extension too. Give that a go and see what the best possible answer is that you can come up with on your Google Doc and make sure you submit it so your teacher can see. Pause the video now, give this a go, remember, you don't need to have everything right, but just try and do what you can. Look for the words that look like English, even if you can just write down two or three words that look like English and you think, I know what that means. Write down two or three words. Or if you don't know any of it, look up one, two, three, maybe four words, find out what they are, write them down, because that's still learning, isn't it? And you're doing a great job. Now we're going to look at the answers and you can give yourself a tick for anything you managed to write down, even if it was just the word internet or music or guitar. That's really good. And if you did the extension, make sure you let us know. Amazing. Now we've got a quick speedy translation here. You don't have to do all of these, we've just done a lot of translation, so just pick maybe two or three of these. I'm only going to give you a short amount of time and just see if you can write down or even just say out loud how you would say these in Spanish. Maybe you don't know all of it but you might know some of the words. So for hello, what is your name? Maybe you can't remember how to say what is your name, but you know 
how to say hello in Spanish. Then you can just say or write down that word and that's a start. If you want to look up a few of these, you can obviously use the internet of course to do that. So pause the video now, give this a quick go, then we're going to move on. Alright, now there are quite a lot here. We're not going to go through all of the answers on this. Um, but for any that you have done, put them in your Word doc, let your teacher know they need marking and we can quickly whiz through them and see if they're right. Let's move on. Now, here we've got one to six. You've just got to write down two pieces of information. So read the sentence and write down what is the day of the week mentioned and what subject is mentioned in school subjects. Number one has already been done for you. It's Monday and geography, you see? You can see lunes, which is Monday, and geografía, geography. So do the same now for two to six. What's the day of the week and the subject? And if you aren't sure about the days of the week, maybe you've forgotten them or you weren't there when we covered that in school, whatever it is, don't worry, you can look it up. And if you aren't sure about that, you can at the very least find the subjects because lots of them look a bit like English. So pause the video now, there's an extension translation to do as well if you want to give that a go. Then we'll go through the answers. And there there are the answers at the bottom and on the right you've got the answer for the translation. If you gave that a go then wow you've done really really well. Let's move on. Now we've got a reading to do. So one to six, you've got some phrases, some questions there, and you've got three people who are telling you about their free time. Tiempo libre. Raúl, Juan and Denisa. I want you to write down which person it is for one to six. For example, who is musical, number one. Now don't just look for the word musical. Think, who is talking about music? Now if I just quickly look through and try to find words that look like English or words I know, I'll probably see that Raúl says saxophone, saxophone. And he says karaoke, karaoke. So, it's safe to say that number one is Raúl, who, like, who is musical. So it's only going to be one of those three people and you can use each person more than once. The extension, see if you can write your own paragraph about your free time using theirs as an example. Pause the video and give this a go, then we'll see the answers. And there are the answers. Give yourself a mark out of six. And I'm just noticing there's a mistake there, isn't there? Because there's only five. So we'll quickly go through this. Number one we said was Raúl. Number two likes going out with friends is going to be Denisa. Because she says Miss Amigas, friends. Number three doesn't like gymnastics. That's Denisa. It's no me gusta nada hacer gimnasia. You see the word gimnasia looks like gymnastics for Denisa. Number four is Juan, um, who likes to talk. Mm. Sorry, I'm looking at this at the same time as you. And I don't think he says that. So um, that's where the mistake is, sorry. So number four is not Juan, um, it's actually Denisa, 
She says, me gusta chatear, chatting, I like to chat. So those ones are all Denisa. Then number five, who doesn't like dancing? That's Juan. He says, no me gusta nada bailar. And you may remember from school that bailar means dancing. And then finally, number six, using technology. Who mentions that? Well, Juan talks about the internet and video games, videojuegos. So it's Juan. All right, sorry about that mistake. Give yourself a mark out of six and put it on your Word doc. Let's move on. We're going to do a listening now. And again, I'm going to read it to you. All you have to do, one, two, three, four is write down the name of the food that the person wants. You can just write the letter. And I've actually put the Spanish word next to it. So you don't even have to know the Spanish. You only have to listen for the Spanish and see if you can pick which one I've said. So for example, sandwich is bocadillo. If I say that word in the sentence for number one, then you would put 1A. That's just an example, so don't put that. <laughs> okay, let's give it a go. Uno, number one. Fernando quiere pollo. Which of those words, A to F, did I say? Listen again. Fernando quiere pollo. Pick the best option. Write down the letter. 2. Lorenzo va a comer un bocadillo. Lorenzo va a comer un bocadillo. 3. Amelia quiere un helado. Amelia quiere un helado. And Juan, number four, Juan siempre come tortilla. Juan siempre come tortilla. Great, hopefully you've put a letter, a letter down for each one. Let's check the answers. There they are. And underneath you can see as well what I read out word for word. Okay, you're doing brilliantly. I know there's lots of vocab we're covering today. So remember, you can always pause, go back, go forward, come back to bits, have a break. You're not expected to do all of this in one go. Take your time. You've got the whole week. Now move on to Sophia and David. And they're talking about their schools, which is another important topic that we would usually cover in year seven. But if you've missed it, don't worry, because we'll make sure you cover it next year. So, one to five, you've got some statements. Are they true or false? You can write true or V for verdadero or false or F for falso. So, write the answers to those letters. Sorry, to those sentences. And there's also an extension. Correct those sentences if you can. There's something wrong with them. That's um, really quite challenging. So, if you can give that a go, that would be amazing. And what I mean by something's wrong with them is that the facts are wrong. So it says number one, Sofia vive in Barcelona. Well, if you read, you'll, say, you'll see that that isn't true. Where does she live? See if you can correct that sentence so it says the right thing. Now, the rest of us, if we're not doing the extension, one to five, let's do the first one together. In Sofia's school, there is a small playground. Is that true? Well, let's have a look. Maybe I don't know what the word for playground is. I can look it up. Or I can just look and find out the word small. I'm looking for the word small. Maybe I remember it's pequeño. I can't see that in there. I can see grande. That means big. And patio is the word for playground, which is, I suppose, a little bit like the word patio we use in this country. So, that must be false, mustn't it? 
because she says grande big, so it's not small. Pause this video, remember you can look it all up if you need to, do some research, find out this vocab, take your time, and then we'll go through the answers. Alright, let's go through those answers together. So number one is false. Number two, David's school has a football pitch. Let's look at David's text. It says, un campo de fútbol. So that's true. Three, in Sophia's school, the laboratories are very modern. So let's look at her one. She says, laboratorios muy modernos. That's very much like English, isn't it? It's true. Four. David likes his school. He says, No me gusta nada mi insti. So we know that no me gusta means I don't like. So it's false. Finally, number five. Sofia likes her school because it's fun. Well, she says, Me gusta mucho porque es interesante. So she does like it, she says me gusta, but she doesn't say it's fun, she says it's interesante, interesting. So that is also false. If you've done the extension, um, then you can mark it with me now. If not, you can skip the next maybe 30 seconds because I'm going to quickly go through the answers. And number one, it's not Sofia vive in Barcelona, it should be Sofia vive in Santiago de Compostela. That's where she says she lives. Number two, Sofia habla con su padre. Does she speak to her dad? Let's have a look. No, she says hablo con mis amigas. So it should be con sus amigas. And number three, el colegio de David tiene una piscina. David's school has a swimming pool. It says, no hay piscina. So it's not true, is it? It should say, no tiene una piscina. It doesn't have a pool. So if you've got any of those, you've done brilliantly. Let's move on now. And we've got a little bit of a gap fill to do. So, for this activity, all you need to do is try to rewrite the sentences in the correct order. These words are not in the correct order. They're all mixed up. So what you need to do is rewrite the sentences so that they're all in the right order. And for number one, let's do it together so you understand what I mean. Always look for the capital letters because that will help you. Um, one of them might be a name, but probably the other one will have to be the first letter of the sentence because you know we always use capital letters at the start of sentences. So that will help. And also the word which has a full stop at the end of it must be the last word. At the bottom, I've put some help. I've put the first letter of each word and the number of letters in that word. So that should help. For example, number one, it says M dash and then G dash 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 dash. Well, let's have a look. That can only be for the options for number one in that mixed up sentence. It can only be me gusta. See what I mean? So give that a go now. It probably will take you five to ten minutes to rewrite them and see if you can work out what they mean in English. And if you need to do some research for that, go ahead. But remember, if it's got a capital letter and it's not at the start of the sentence, it must be the name of a place. And if it's the name of a town or city, which it will be in this case, you don't need to translate it into English. The name can stay the same, OK? Let's move on now. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the answers for this activity here. If you want um, to mark it, you want your teachers to have a look, remember you can submit that document and we can check through it for you. Now let's move on to practice time. 
So for 1 to 5, at what time and which activity? For example, number 1 says a la una voy al parque. Now what number is una or uno? Hopefully you know it means 1. In that case then, number 1, the time would be C on the right, where it says 1 o'clock. And the place is parque. What must that be? The park, H. So you should put for number 1, C and H. So one of the letters that's a time and one of the letters that's a place. Pause the video and give this a go now. You've also got an extension at the bottom with some times to translate if you want to give that a go. Now let's go through the answers. And there they are. So I'll just give you a moment, pause the video and mark this. And if you got 10 out of 10, then you've done brilliantly and you've remembered your time vocab really well. And that's now the end of this week's work. So, well done. It's quite a lot for us to get through today and lots of vocab, lots of revision. So if your brain hurts a little bit, go and have a nice break, do something else and you've really earned a bit of a rest. So have a fab rest of the week. Adios.